I think Senator Poe had a, did you have a question that you wanted to ask? Mr. Kwan, I just want to thank you for reaching out to my office and uh, having the, for the two of us to have an opportunity to speak. Um, we actually spoke at quite, you know, quite some, uh, quite uh, lengthy uh, for, on a number of different issues. At the time, um, one of the questions that I uh, subsequently was not able to ask of you because I didn't have the documents, but these documents that I'm now going to ask you about are public documents. So. Uh, let me just make mention and just really start it out this way. And part of the federal complaint um, indicates on page 10 that there were funds that were structured into your TD account. Um, the, the transfer, and, and, that, and that account, by the way, when I make reference to it, are the accounts for both, uh, for the business that both your mother and your wife are the sole signatories. Uh, the transfer, the, it, seven deposits or seven checks were deposited um, during the period of March 21st through March 23rd totaling $290,236.02, which were traceable to structured cash deposits to the TD bank, TD account. I'm going to make reference to those seven deposit uh, um, transactions. On March 21st, there were four such deposits in the amount of $50,000 each. On March 23rd, there was one deposit um, in the amount of $71,596.02. On March 23rd of 2011, there were 9,200. And on March 24th, there, were, uh, there was a deposit of 9,420, again totaling the 292,236.02. These seven uh, checks that were deposited were then taken from your TD account and was deposited into three different bank accounts. It went from TD bank account to a Hudson bank account to a citizen bank account. Portions of the 290,236 to the tune or the total of $150,000 was taken out of those that particular account and individually on, on, there were three such deposits made on March 25th. To the, uh, each of those amounts were done in, um, in a deposit of 50000 Could you, now back in, when we met in my office, you indicated to me that the, 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 your, the company moved their account to another account on April of 2011, you didn't give me a date. So in April of 2011, however, all of these other transactions occurred. Could you please explain to the committee why there was the need? Because there, you know, it's a question of how what it actually appears like. But let me let me ask you: There were seven such deposits within four days to three different banks, of which you took practically half of those funds from uh, one account and transferred it to a different account. Could you please explain that? Yes, Senator. <clears throat> and I think it would be helpful uh, to step back a little bit uh, and talk about the TD bank account itself. Uh, the TD bank mic. account itself. Um, in November of 2009, uh, my mother opened up the TD bank account. Um, and the reason for that was she had originally been at Hudson Valley for both the credit card deposits and the cash deposits prior to November of 2009. So she was at Hudson Valley. Around that time, Hudson Valley had changed their policy and now is going to charge 
for cash transactions to the amount of maybe $500 to $1,000 a month for the cash transactions. So my mother then decided to take the cash, just for the cash. So she kept the credit card transactions in Hudson Valley, moved the cash account to the TD Bank in November of 2009. And that's why you have now two separate banks, Hudson Valley for the credit cards and TD Bank for the cash. Now, in February, in March of 11, she is notified by TD Bank that she's going to close that account. They're going to close that account. There's in that account approximately $296,000. She now needs to move the money. So she moves the money in those denominations, as you identified, Senator, into the only bank account that she had, which was Hudson. The problem with Hudson, though, at the time, it still had those fee tr for, tra for cash transactions. So in that period of time, my mother and my wife are looking for another bank account where they're not going to charge those fees for the cash transactions. They find one at Citizens Bank where they waive those can tra cash transaction fees. So it goes from TD Bank, because they're going to close it, it goes into the Hudson Valley account where the credit card transactions remained. And then because they were continually continuing to charge for the cash transactions, they then took the money cash from the Hudson Valley and put it into the Citizens Bank where they are now. So now they still have the two accounts, one at Hudson Valley for the credit cards and one at Citizens for the cash. Was any, it, it indicates, it further indicates here though that both Hudson Valley and Citizen Bank both maintain branches within that Eastern uh, District of New York. Were any of those funds seized during that period? Was there, were they a part of that? Because if you're saying that it was a matter of just transferring mm -hmm. those dollars as a result of just making sure that your, um, the, your share, the shareholders were not having to pay additional costs for those monthly transactions, then why would that be part of the seizure? My understanding, based upon the facts that I've been able to glean from this case and my experience, was that provision or those provisions concerning the trail of money from TD and ultimately the citizens in Hudson Valley was so that they can establish the link so that they can go into that account and seize those funds. It was simply a seizure issue for them. They wanted to seize those funds, but they had to establish that those funds had come originally from the TD Bank. So I don't believe when I read that portion of the complaint that they were alleging necessarily that those transactions were problematic, it was simply to identify additional sources that originally came from TD Bank, ultimately into C citizens, so that they can go and seize that money. That was, that was a step, it was a, almost a, um, a jurisdictional issue. They need to establish the linkage, because otherwise they, they, they don't have the right to seize independent funds. Would it not have made sense, though, to take the full deposit or the take out the full one hundred and fifty thousand dollars and uh, uh, deposit that all in one day rather than doing it in two and in, in two separate dates and in integral uh, intervals of fifty thousand dollars each? I think she was physically carrying those checks from I think anyway from okay. from TD Bank to another. So I think she didn't want to carry one big check for two hundred ninety six thousand dollars. I think that's what her mindset was, but my understanding of reading that complaint is that that wasn't necessarily a problematic uh, deposit or a depositing pattern. It was simply a way to trace the money from TD Bank and ultimately where it ended up so they could seize it. Okay. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Senator. Thank you, Senator Powell.